This is Master Wong Chun Leung, one of the world's leading authorities on Wing Chun Kung Fu. He is also recognized within the Hong Kong martial arts community as being the late Bruce Lee's foremost instructor under the guidance of Grandmaster Yip Mun. The sequence of simple hand patterns being performed here, although appearing rather gentle and harmless at first glance, are the seeds of an ingenious system of combat containing some of the deadliest close-range fighting techniques ever devised. Wing Chun, based on the principles of both physics and human anatomy, has been proven as one of the most practical forms of self-defense to date. Grandmaster Yip Mun was responsible for Wing Chun's world fame. The text you see here, written by him, is the entire history of this southern Chinese system which he introduced to Hong Kong from his native province, Guangdong. The roots of the art go back to the famed Shaolin Monastery, which for centuries was the hub of Chinese martial arts. During the Qing Dynasty, Manchu troops killed most of the Shaolin warrior monks and burned down their monastery. Among the few survivors was a Buddhist nun, Ng Moi, who took refuge in the White Crane Temple at Tai Leung Mountain. There, according to legend, she created a system of Kung Fu after being inspired by watching a crane and fox in combat. She then taught her deadly art to a woman, Yim Wing Chun, whom the style has been named after. Yip Mun, the fifth generation master who died in 1972, openly propagated what was once a secret style in order to preserve the art from extinction. His disciple, Bruce Lee, credits Wing Chun for being the basis from which his own modern style, Jeet Kune Do, evolved. Wing Chun is a very effective system due to its scientific approach to combat. The style's sophisticated fighting principles are based on both simplicity and the theory of economy of motion or conservation of energy. All the techniques are designed to be structurally faster than other fighting methods, as well as more efficient. An imaginary line, running down the middle of the body, called the center line, is the basis of Wing Chun fighting theory. Its path is determined by crossing the wrists while extending the arms, first down, then up. This movement is found in the beginning of all three Wing Chun forms. Many of the vulnerable points of the human body are located along the center line. Thus, Wing Chun's offensive theory stresses attacking an opponent's center line. Attacking either to the left or right of his center line your force will be dissipated if he rolls with the blow. Attack his center line and he must absorb the strike's full impact. All Wing Chun's offensive techniques, in particular the straight punch, which is the style's major weapon, begins from the center line. Notice your fists travel along the same path which is perpendicular to the center line. Wing Chun punching is always direct, since the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Your fist originates at your center line and is delivered directly to his center line. In general, your opponent's nose is the target. Defensively, Wing Chun stresses the instinctive protection of one center line through a tight on-guard arm position where the elbow of your lead arm is always a fist distance from the center line. Never is the elbow out since you are left exposed. Though your arm moves to block, your elbow remains a fixed axis. Wing Chun employs shifting allowing the body to revolve on its center line axis. Defensively, 
Shifting helps you roll with punches that may get by your blocks. Offensively, shifting creates various angles for attacks that will subtly penetrate an opponent's defenses. Body shifting also increases the distance of your arm's reach. Shifting quickly magnifies punching power since tremendous force is generated from sudden torque in the waist and hips. Wing Chun is structurally faster than many styles of fighting because it employs simultaneous offense and defense. Block and attack should not be separated into two motions. Wing Chun's block and attack is executed in one motion. After striking out, the fist automatically blocks when retracted. A line extended from shoulder to shoulder and perpendicular to the center line forms the four gates. Wing Chun's defensive system trains one to employ various blocks to protect each of the four gates. Here, Master Wong protects his upper right gate as he blocks and punches in a single motion. Alternate simultaneous blocks and punches protect both your left and right upper gates. Observe how body shifting is coordinated with both the blocks and strikes. Master Wong demonstrates defense of the upper gates against an opponent's multiple punches. Similarly, both left and right lower gates may also be protected with simultaneous alternate blocks and chops. Observe how the arms move in unison. Here, defending his left and right lower gates, he simultaneously strikes with a right chop, then a left punch. Whenever possible, grab, pin or immobilize the opponent's arm to gain control and prevent him from attacking. In accordance with the theory of economy of motion, Wing Chun hand techniques defend and block at the same time and are delivered in a bursting series of straight rapid fire attacks. The basic straight punch begins in front of your solar plexus and is thrust out with your fist at nose level. As one fist punches, the opposite fist retracts. Notice the wrist snapping action unique to Wing Chun. This unusual movement permits you to both deflect and punch with the same hand simultaneously. It also creates a powerful shocking force even from short distances as seen demonstrated by this one inch punch. Execute finger thrusts like punches and keep your fingertips stiffly together. Finger thrusts are either aimed at an opponent's eyes or as seen here, to his throat.
when employing palm thrusts, use the palm heel as a weapon. Palm thrusts directed under an opponent's nose are very effective. In Wing Chun, force never clashes with force. Instead, the larger force is deflected by a lesser force. Tan Sao employs the thumb side of your forearm to block. At completion, your elbow returns to the fixed elbow position, one fist distance from your center line. Rotation of the forearm and the palm's abrupt upward twist generate power. Blocking power is enhanced by twisting your torso while shifting. Yun Sao, excellent for training wrist flexibility, is used for changing hand position quickly in combat. It is executed by a relaxed rotation of the hand around the wrist. This same hand, used to encircle the opponent's attacking arm, can also be used to attack. Sao employs either your palm or edge of the hand to block. Upon completion, your hand is in a prayer-like position in front of your chest. Wu Sao is the rear guard hand position employed when an opponent's punch penetrates your forward defenses. It is employed either to block outward with the hand's edge, inward with the palm. Fok Sao employs the inside of your wrist to block. At completion, your arm is in the fixed elbow position, one fist distance from your center line. Fok Sao is important in sticking hands practice. Fok Sao uses the palm heel for deflection. By utilizing the wrist's snapping action. It is often combined with a punch. Jum Sao is an oblique downward chopping motion that employs the hand edge or forearm to block. Upon completion, the arm is in the fixed elbow position. The arm motion is slight since the elbows stay close to the center line. Its effectiveness lies in body shifting. Gan Sao employs the forearm to block low level and groin attacks by combining both the hinge action of your elbow and body shifting. It is usually used to block kicks. Long Sao is unusual, since it deviates from the fixed elbow position. It is performed by a rolling motion of the forearm, which is the blocking surface. Coordination with torso rotation is important in Bong Sao. Wing Chun kicks, used for either harassment or closing the fighting gap, 
always supplement the hands with fast and low direct strikes to the groin, knees or shins. The front heel kick is delivered straight from the ground with a slight snapping action in the knee. Kick direct, but never higher than the midsection. A cross stomp kick uses the sole of the foot to break the opponent's balance, allowing for follow-up hand strikes. The low side kick is for stomping down with the heel or sole of the foot. Master Wong employs a side kick to his opponent's inner thigh as a harassment. This is a cross stomp kick to side kick combination. As the opponent evades the stomp kick, Master Wong follows up with a side kick to the midsection. This is a front kick and leg trip combination. After his front kick is blocked, Master Wong follows the blocking force and uses his leg to trip the opponent. Wing Chun's basic stance is shoulder width or a bit wider. Knees are slightly bent. This natural fighting stance affords both stability and mobility. You should be coiled, ready to burst into an attacking or retreating opponent. Advances and withdrawals are performed by a short shuffling motion of the feet, somewhat like the Western fencing shuffle, where you remain in the same stance throughout. To advance, the front foot first steps forward about six inches, then the rear leg slides forward. To retreat, the rear leg steps backwards, then the front leg follows suit. When advancing, spring off the rear leg. When retreating, spring off the front leg. Circle stepping differs from the shuffle in that you actually alternate between left and right stances. To advance, your rear foot slides forward using a circular motion while the other foot slides up into a natural stance position. Circle stepping is used for cutting off or pressing an opponent who has great mobility. A wall bag filled with dried beans or sand is an essential training aid for developing power. Striking with the fist or palms gives one a feeling of penetration and toughens the skin and bones. Train slowly and gradually. Although most Kung Fu styles retain a considerable number of instructional forms, Wing Chun has only three. Contained within these three forms, however, is the entire scope of the style's theoretical and technical knowledge. The first form, which is being demonstrated here by Master Wong, is called Sunim Tao, or the little idea form. Most of these movements would seem so simple and lacking in either speed or power that a novice might well wonder what relationship, if at all, they bear to actual combat. Regardless of appearances, Sunim Tao is the foundation upon which the entire Wing Chun system was built. It includes most of the basic techniques discussed earlier. Stance, shifting, blocks, punches, and finger strikes, as well as all the underlying scientific principles covering the center line, elbow positioning, and the four gates. Performed slowly from a stationary stance, it permits the student to learn hand coordination on either side of the body. Before attempting to practice this form, first study carefully and thoroughly the previous section on Wing Chun's basic theories. 
total familiarity with these all-important principles will greatly accelerate your learning process. Once you feel you understand all the basic concepts, begin practicing the footwork patterns, blocks, kicks and strikes, first separately, then in combinations until you can execute them naturally and without any conscious effort. Now you are ready to learn Siu Nim Tao. To perform Siu Nim Tao correctly, you should practice a few movements at a time over and over until you feel comfortable with each motion. Continue on to the next set of movements only when you've absorbed completely the movements of the previous set. After having learned all the movements and in order to test your ability, try to run through the entire form in unison with Master Wong. If you succeed in accomplishing this without any hesitations or stops, proceed to the following sections on form applications. Remember, when practicing techniques with a partner, be careful not to injure him or her. Always exercise control. Once you've mastered the basic theories, basic techniques, Siu Nim Tao and its applications, you're ready to advance to the next stage or Chi Sao. Tan Sao, or the palm up block, uses a sudden forearm twist at the end of the movement for increased effectiveness. Tan Sao is combined with a simultaneous punch. Hyun Sao, or the circling palm, is used after blocking to encircle your opponent's arm. It utilizes one hand for both blocks and attacks. After encircling the opponent's arm, a palm thrust follows naturally. Park Sao, or the palm slap, is effective for upper gate defense. It is best combined with a head slip or body dodge. The downward palm block is used against attacks to the lower gate. It defends against leg and knee kicks. Here a variation of the downward palm block is used to break out of an attempted elbow lock. A shoulder and forearm shrug can repel an attacker. A double rear palm strike is used against attacks from the rear. It is a primary defense against a rear bear hug and can be followed with a throw. The double knife edge chop can be adapted for practical application. The primary target is the opponent's throat. This is the palm jerk block. A sudden jerk effectively destroys an opponent's balance. Here a palm jerk block is followed immediately by an eye thrust with the same hand. pulls the opponent into the strike. A high wrist block to low palm block demonstrates how both blocks and strikes can be done with the same arm. A punch may be immediately transformed into a block. Or a 
vice versa, a block may be transformed into a punch. Gan Sao, or the low block, is used for defense of the lower gates and can be combined with an attack. Here it is used along with a knife hand strike. Bong Sao, or the wing arm block, can be followed with a double palm push. Master Wong blocks, then pushes his opponent. This is a palm jerk in combination with a palm thrust. A palm thrust to the throat after a palm jerk breaks your opponent's grab. Other than being alternate finger thrusts, these movements have another meaning. They can be utilized for breaking out of a grab. After the break, they may also be used to strike. Chi Sao, or sticky hands, is a two-man exercise for developing arm coordination, so that while one hand blocks, the other attacks. It also promotes tremendous sensitivity in the arms, thereby allowing one to instinctively determine the direction of an opponent's force, and develop the quick reflexes needed to direct that force with a minimum of effort. Single-arm chi sao prepares you for double chi sao. Since only one arm is used, you may concentrate on proper arm position and feeling the opponent's flow of force. Tan sao, a low palm thrust, and bong sao comprise the movements executed by partner A. Jam Sao, a straight punch, and Fok Sao comprise the movements executed by partner B to match those of partner A. Partner B's Fok Sao rests on A's Tan Sao. Partner A's Tan Sao converts to a low palm thrust, which is blocked by B's Jam Sao. Partner A's Tan Sao changes to a Bong Sao to block B's straight punch. Both partners perform these movements in response to each other's complementary techniques with a firm yet relaxed flow of force. After achieving proficiency with single arm Chi Sao, begin double arm chi sao. The first stage is pun sao or rolling hands. Both partners, A and B, perform the same arm movements. The right arm alternates between tan sao and bong sao. remains in a Fok Sao position, which in turn alternates from a high to a low position. Partner B's left high Fok Sao rests on A's right Bong Sao, while A's low Fok Sao rests on B's right Tan Sao. 
Both left arms in boxau position rest on the other's right arm, which changes from tansau to bongsau. Both partners roll their arms up and down in unison. Avoid stiffness and rigidity, and never try to use sheer muscle force to overpower your opponent. With practice, the feeling for rapid directional changes in the forces of an opponent's attack or defense will give you a sense for when to yield, resist, defend, or strike. Gorsal, or sticky hands fighting practice, the second stage of double chi sal, is a type of regulated sparring where you learn how to employ the techniques taught in the three forms against an opponent. The importance of the centerline theory and the significance of form and function will be realized. If you expose your center line either by failing to maintain the fixed elbow position or if your blocks deviate too much, the opponent's attacks will penetrate. You will get hit. Gorsal hones your fighting techniques so you can react with a different combination of basic blocks and attacks in a free flow exchange of techniques when the opponent's movements are unpredictable. This liberates you from formal fixed patterns of fighting. You learn to discard all the rules, to adapt and express techniques naturally and spontaneously in the here now of Gorsal practices. Here are some examples. Disengaging is for releasing your arm from an opponent's blocking arm. The pressure from your block enables your opponent to disengage and punch. With proper sensitivity, as he disengages, your arm flows forward to punch him first. This continuous flow of energy through your arms is compared with water. Water seeks the path of least resistance. When practicing, be like water. Avoid the strong and attack the weak. A constant forward pressure towards your opponent's center line is the secret to Gorsal. If your opponent's arms deviate too far and expose his center line, automatically penetrate his defenses like water crashing against rocks. As Master Wong detects his opponent's right Tan Sao has deviated too far from the center line, his left Fox Sao changes into a punch to the opponent's solar plexus. Detecting Master Wong's forward force, his opponent blocks and traps his arms. Master Wong's left Fuk Sao crosses over and traps his opponent's left hand as he presses forward with a right palm thrust to the throat. His opponent counters the technique by parrying the right palm attack with a right grab and trapping Master Wong's arms with a Bong Sao. As his left high Fuk Sao reaches across to grab his opponent's left hand, Master Wong's right Tan Sao disengages into a punch. When his opponent feels his left arm being grabbed, he performs a left Bong Sao to Master Wong's punch. Master Wong's Park Sao blocks his opponent's left arm and he slips in with a low palm strike. The opponent employs body shifting by pivoting to the right and dissolves Wong's forward rush as soon as he feels Wong's body advancing. After a series of exchanges, the opponent applies an elbow lock on Wong's right arm. Instead of resisting, Wong flows with the direction of force, crashing into his opponent with his shoulder. As the opponent senses Master Wong's body pressing forward, he releases his left arm and employs Bong Sao to dissolve the force. Wong's right Bong Sao grabs his opponent's right Tan Sao, pulling him forward, and locking the opponent's left hand, he executes a left punch. Feeling himself being pulled forward, the opponent employs body shifting to divert Master Wong's forward surge of force. Then, his right Park Sao pins Wong's left arm.
Sensing the opponent is preoccupied with hand techniques, Master Wong suddenly employs a straight heel kick to the midsection. The opponent, alert to both hand and foot attacks, detects Master Wong's kick, sidesteps and delivers an upward palm thrust to the throat. After long practice, you will grasp the meaning of a verse on Chi Sao that states, Receive what comes, follow what goes, attack when the hand disengages. The zenith of Chi Sao is attained when your sense of touch and reflexes are so keen that you can react effectively, even blindfolded. You will have completed Wing Chun's basic training after having mastered the contents of this tape. The more profound levels of the Wing Chun scientific system of combat, as contained within its second and third instructional forms, are to be covered in the following sequel. In addition, the highly guarded secrets of the famous 108 wooden dummy techniques will be analyzed in detail. Wing Chun's refined hand techniques, adapted to the use of advanced weaponry such as the lethal double butterfly knives and the six and a half point pole forms are to be demonstrated as well in their entirety.